whenever I'm going to film, there's always somebody with something really loud going on around me. Hi, Alison Seaside Housewife here, and Daisy sprung a leak. Well, it's very sad, but these things happen. She's almost 50. I'm not going to worry too much. So, she's sprung quite a big leak down here and I have been a bit neglectful of poor Daisy and she has just been sat here since our last trip away and not really even unpacked her, which is very naughty. But I have some free time now, so I'm going to deal with this leak. I know exactly what it's leaking from. It's the awning rail. If you've been following my channel, you know that I have done up a 1969 Bluebird Caravan and I had no prior experience doing anything like this before and on a lot of really good advice, I just went for it and I knew there would be a few things that I might have to come back to and this is definitely one of them. I've been very lucky that the skylight touch wood hasn't leaked yet. Oh, sorry, I'm still trying to get my coffee in me. That must be all you ever see is me drinking coffee. But anyway, so I took some advice from my brilliant grandpa and I've gone and brought some products to fix the problem. First thing that I've brought is some PVA glue. I've also brought some wet rot wood preserver and <laughs> a kitchen syringe. It's the only one that I could find. I'm hoping that it will work. So what I'm going to do is the awning rail, basically when I replaced it all, there was a little bit of damage inside the wood that was what you screwed the awning rail onto. I basically had a couple of loose screws where they had the gap had grown and there's probably a bit of damage to the wood inside. So my amazing grandpa has said, what I need to do is plug that gap with something to allow the screw to screw back into something but you can't put something that is gonna hold that screw in forever because you need to get the awning rail back off again in a couple of years to reseal it. So his advice is PVA glue. I've gotta put that into the gap, allow it to dry just a long, long enough time that it starts to harden up but doesn't go too solid so that I can then screw the screw in. Then when it comes to taking it out, I can just probably pull that whole lot back out again in a couple of years time. But there's quite a lot of damage, I think, to the actual wood inside. That's why I've bought this. This takes two hours to cure, so I've got to put that in first. I knew it would be a bit of a lengthy job. That's why I've only just come around to it today, even though this leak has been growing. It did start off as quite a small leak, and it has definitely grown, but we have some had some torrential rain the last few weeks. I mean, literally, like a flood outside. So it has progressively got worse in a really small amount of time. If you spot a leak in your caravan and you can't get to it straight away or the weather's too bad for you to be able to get in there and really fix it, try and get a tarpaulin or a cover on there as soon as possible. Unfortunately I had neither and when I first spotted it it was a really small leak and I thought oh it'll be fine I'll get to that really quickly and unfortunately the torrential rain just set in and yeah so here I am, got today to do it so I'm going to get up that ladder and do it. I don't think there's any more leaks. I need to have another look round. Um, I have had a quick visual check of the awning rail and I haven't lost any screws, which is really good. So they are all there. I think they're just a little bit wiggly and getting a little bit of water down. A huge, amazing tip from my mother-in-law is creeping crack. Now, you can't own a vintage caravan, or probably even a caravan actually, without a lot of innuendos. When you say to people, when they have a leak, or they have an old caravan or an old car, and you go, oh, you need creeping crack. They just look at you like, what are you trying to say to me, Alice? And I'm like, no, Captain Creeping Crack is absolutely fantastic. Um, my mother-in-law was saying that on her boat, she probably puts it in about every six months, but obviously that's in the sea, so it will take a lot more battering. This one, basically when I finished the awning rails, I put Creeping Crack in too, and I also went round all the window seals too and put Creeping Crack in, as well as in that skylight. It's just worth it. What it does is it's a liquid and it just filters all the way down until it finds a hole and then it goes solid and fills that hole. So yeah, if you have an old caravan or an old retro car, make sure you have some creeping crack. Or an old boat, anything like that, it's a real must have. I'm gonna put the link down in the description below so you can get some creeping crack, okay? So I'm gonna drink my coffee, 
and get up a ladder. Wish me luck. Bye. My run seal, I gotta shout because they're so loud. My run seal, wet rot hardener. I can't get in it. It just says, look, it's got this little symbol here, look. Hush. I'm in that, and they're going, Ugh! Ugh! no, it won't come off. So I've resulted to, to battery, look. Lucky it's got a proper case on it. God, it's a bit windy out here. Right, I'm actually really impressed with this kitchen craft syringe, which is for baking, um, but it's because it comes with this really long extension on it, which is gonna be really great to get right in the awning rail. And uh, note to self, make sure that you put the cap on first, because I literally just poured all the wood hardener in and it just went straight through the bottom. I definitely need that coffee this morning. Right, I will get on. See you in a minute. Right, so I've got the wood hardener in now. It's a really messy job, so make sure you wear gloves. Now I've got to leave it for two hours to set. What should I do? Lunchtime. Bye. Hi. So the hardener has hardened and it's getting really cold outside. And I've put my hair up because the wind's really strong and I'm freezing. It's so cold. Right, okay, so I've got my baby wipes. I've got my syringe. And I've now got PVA glue. <laughs> right, hopefully I can explain it now. It's really quite windy, so the camera's a bit wobbly wobbly. So I hope it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> but what you want to do is, as you insert it in, push down and then keep pushing down as you're pulling out. So you're filling the gap as you go out, okay? Like that's another job for another day, look. Right, so you put it in, all the way in. to feel a bit of resistance as well. Okay. And when it's all spurts out the top you know you've got it done. So wipe off it. Make sure you've got your wipes really close because this is a yucky job. Luckily this is only PVA, not like the other wood hardener that was really horrible. Oh, I'm sure it's going to rain any minute now. So yeah, first of all, I put the wood hardener in, waited for two hours for that to... Oh, camera's going to go! Oh, it started raining! Right, abandon mission! I can't abandon mission because she's leaking. So, I'm just going to have to go and bear it. When finding a leak on your caravan is you've probably found it when it's raining. So you then need to wait for a nice day to come out and do it. Well, today was a nice day and then it got very windy and then it got very rainy. And now here I am with a syringe full of PVA. The really loud, everybody seems to be doing stuff today, trying to get the hole fixed while being blasted by the weather. Right, so I have now put the hardener in, that's set for two hours. Then I put the PVA glue in, then I left that for a little bit just to set so it wasn't runny liquid but it was just starting to set. Then screwed in the screws uh, and then I just had a really good look at it and what I've done is on one of them I think it might still be a potential problem so I've just added in a tiny little bit of movable sealant in the back while I was screwing in just to give it double protection. The wind is really picking up now, it looks so windswept. It's always in Britain when you're trying to fix something outdoors, it starts raining. But never mind, so the next job will be to paint the affected area inside. This is a two prong thing, obviously one, it looks awful. But also this is to make sure that you can check if that problem comes back again. Because never assume you have fully fixed something, especially not in a 50 year old caravan make sure that you do the job and then really keep a close eye on that area going forward because you might need to change things slightly. Hopefully that's the problem fixed now, but I never say 100% because you take this little box out on the road and it wobbles everywhere. So you've always got to keep an eye out for leaks. That's 
probably the best advice I can give you is just be really proactive at looking at your caravan, at looking at different areas, at keep an eye on changes, you know, double check everything. Like you do your safety checks before you leave, before you go off on your adventure. Just also just keep a little eye out, you know, oh, is that hole getting bigger or, you know, is that a leak coming? And also in your caravan, keep some good quality sealant as well. So if you are away and a little leak springs and you can get to it easily, then, you know, sort it out. So every year in the winter, I'll be checking the caravan anyway, getting the skylight out, having a really good look round, checking all the previous damage, making sure it's not got any worse. You know, I would like this caravan to last for another 50 years. She literally was so damp, wet, rotten with holes in the floor and goodness knows what else when we brought her and we brought her back up to being a usable wonderful little caravan and I want that to continue and that's what I really love about buying something old is that you're not just restoring it you're keeping it going you're kind of a guardian of that property you know hopefully if I've done everything in this caravan correctly she will last onto my children and maybe even my grandchildren will get to go in this caravan and how wonderful is that so that's why keep an eye on those jobs get to them quickly unfortunately this one sat for a little bit longer than I would have liked to before I got to it but you can be a bit more proactive than me maybe you don't have three young crazy kids to run around afterwards but you know it's being done now so it's all fine I've not got many more jobs to do on Daisy. I know people keep asking me for a full tour and you know, want to have a really good looking Daisy, but she's not quite finished yet. There are a few more jobs to do. I'm more the kind of person that get out using that item because a lot of people will buy a caravan and then spend a whole year doing it up, start using it and think, oh, I wish I'd done that differently or could have really have done with an extra shelf there and that kind of thing. So I reckon do like we've done and get it safe and watertight, get using it. You might completely change your mind about the colour scheme like we did. So yeah, if you like my video, give it a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. Sh uh, share if you want to, that'd be great. Sharing scary. Um, and please subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more stuff about old caravans, adventures in caravans, our little day trips out with the family and our new tow car which I'm so excited about. I think I'm like a big bubble that's just like oh, uh, Our new tow car as well which is a 1985 Volvo which is very exciting. So we will be keeping you up to date with our adventures in our beautiful Daisy which now hopefully is leak free. Wish me luck. But see you soon.